Sorry. So I forgot to say that this is Robrecht Desmet, who Hello. is uh, uh, who is accompanied by August Orts, Marie Logie. And I forgot to say that uh, Lida is now working with Nico Yip, who is from Lux in London. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm gonna have. I'm, I'm not gonna read this out loud, so, so I'm gonna have give you the time to read this. Um, so go ahead. I'll read along. Okay, um, is this on? Yeah. Okay, this is uh, a part of um, the prelude, uh, page long poem by William Wordsworth, which was uh, a romantic poet in the 19th century, and which was three years ago already now, the starting point of my film. Uh, well, one of the starting points, but I wanted to start with this because I'm gonna use parts of the text in the film. Um, I have this particular interest in Wordsworth for many reasons, uh, of which I would like to uh, draw attention to only a few uh, today. Um, first, the first thing that uh, I have with Words, Wordsworth is uh, the fact that he's um, truly a landscape poet. Uh, so he's, um, uh, the prelude is like, a, if you want, it's a landscape poem. It's a, it's a description of Wordsworth uh, doing a tour of Europe, basically, and describing uh, his, his walk, his uh, impressions. Um, so yes, that, that was the starting point. Um, the, the title of the film is, uh, for now, it's a working title, is Trop Tôt which has somehow a relation maybe with the prelude, uh, but I, I will try to go into that uh, a little bit later. So Wordsworth and his landscape. Maybe we can say a trotto is too soon. Sorry, yes, yeah. too soon, too yeah. early. Yeah. I yeah. prefer too early uh, instead of too soon. I don't know how <laughs> we can go into that, but um, uh, this is uh, the, the, the next, uh, th what, what I w w would like to connect Wordsworth with and I don't know which of the two came first, but this is a view on Brussels, the city I live in, I have been living in for uh, quite some years now. Um, 
and um, I wanted to to embark on a project that uh, reads actually the landscape of Brussels, um, which is. Yeah, it's the capital of Belgium, but it's also the capital of Europe. And I, I felt somehow that these two, the trip of Wordsworth uh, through Europe, uh, now a long time ago, uh, could, and, and the combination with its 21st century capital um, could be interesting to, to put together, to combine uh, with these kind of uh, landscape shots. Um, A big part of the of the project is shot. So almost everything is shot, and as we speak, I'm in the in the process of editing, which makes it kind of difficult to to draw back from it and and speak about it. Um, but I will try to do my best uh, to to um, to talk about this yeah connection between Brussels um, as yeah, a landscape and why I uh, decided to make a film about this. There's another uh, aspect, there's another element in the film that I am uh, putting in is um, this very small sculpture. It's not bigger than the palm of our hands. Uh, it's a bronze sculpture of a sheep liver that was used to um, read the map of the universe, uh, like the stars. Uh, in with the Etrusks, and um, at first there was a visual connection I had with uh, not only with the map, which is I think quite clear in these images, but also which I hope is clearer in these images, with the with the cityscape, with the, the yeah, it has a visual connection with with the city if you want. Um, so uh, these three things I decided uh, could uh, be the starting point for me to embark on a on a film project about Brussels, or maybe not so much about Brussels, but about a European city like Brussels, uh, which happens to be uh, its capital. So how am I combining these three things? Um, I am. I'm, I'm having the text of Wordsworth, uh, large parts. Uh, I've spent a, lo a, a lot of recordings of uh, trying to voice this text, which is kind of difficult because it's yeah, very specific uh, poetry. Um, so um, brief parts of this poetry are, are to, to be, sorry. <laughs> I'm <laughs> skipping all these things. Brief um, uh, parts of the poetry are, are, are actually a voiceover in the text, but at, at the moment I'm also exper experimenting with this uh, presence, which is why I had uh, all of us reading this. Uh, so th th this is really something that's uh, kind of open, although I have recorded and although I really like the idea of the voiceover. This version of bringing the text in the film is also an option and it's something I'm really working on now uh, because for yeah several reasons um, now the way I I would like to um, talk about the approach of the Brussels landscape there are uh, of course it, it's impossible to to well at least for me it's impossible to to represent, to present the whole city in one single film. Um, so there are a few areas, uh, if you want, that I, that I chose that are either developing at a very high speed at the moment or either uh, are completely empty or meaningless, if you want. Um, and these are like the areas I'm kind of visiting. Um, this is the canal area, this is... Uh, Sorry. Um, with, if you want, the Wordsworth gaze, which is the gaze of the visitor, with the way he arrives, uh, it's uh, when when he he's traveling, he's walking, he's arriving at a certain spot, and he's not really, um, yeah, he's just the visitor, the outsider, the onlooker, and it's that's the kind of gaze that he's uh, encountering the space or. 
but at the same time he's describing it. Um, so I'm spending a lot of time filming on yeah, vehicles or movements that could uh, present this kind of gaze of being constantly, uh, like it's not wandering literally, but it's a way of moving ahead, it's going somewhere, um, as to evoke this kind of uh, traveling pace that Wordsworth was, uh, that, was, that you could feel in the text of Wordsworth, let's say. And this is contrasted by, uh, sorry, yeah, by the views. Like, so there's two different ways of looking at the landscape wi which are con constantly um, contrasted, uh, contradicted if you want, which is the gaze upon the landscape, which is the, the overview, the panorama, and the experience of the landscape, the movement through the landscape, the being in the landscape. Um, voila. So there are various ways, and again, I'm editing now, so maybe this is a sequence that not, that's not necessarily going to make it to the film, but is now very representative for what I've been doing with exploring the space of, of, uh, of, of the city. Uh, so you have this, this constant contrast between the overviews and the more like the experience uh, of the landscape itself. Um, and as I said, these, like for instance, th these are of course kind of places that um, that are in this case clearly in transitions. You see like a building site, but again, historically for Brussels, this has been a, a very important area and had, had undergone uh, a lot of changes through the years. So this is, yeah, already this place spatially is loaded with history and meaning. Um, Which brings me to the next point, which is uh, col the collaboration with um, uh, an urbanist who, uh, which whom I am writing a narrative that accompanies the, the shots of these places, which is a narrative that is about the potential these spaces could have, could get. Um, and on a larger scale, one could say, um, Again, it's very difficult for me to talk about it, but we could approach, uh, so Brussels has a lot of these spaces in, in transition. And on a larger scale, we could say that Brussels is a city that has, that, that is at, let's say the last decade and probably in this kind of transition, which, which it's not at all an evident um, city in terms of like, as the capital of Europe, it's not at all evident because it doesn't have this monumental presence or it doesn't have this image in um, a collective mind of, of like, ah oh yeah, that's like the symbolic potential the capital of Europe has. Not at all. But uh, maybe it's because of that that it has a lot of potential to, to actually become uh, the truly a European capital. So back to the narrative that, that, that we're writing is, is uh, and that is to be presented as a voiceover, it is to, you could say, write against these images or write, uh, write um, in spite of them, uh, which is like places like this, is like this is the city center, it's, it's being demolished, but again, it has a great potential for things to come. So this is, uh, basically what we're trying to do, and I'm trying not to go too long, but, um, and that again, sorry, yeah, I, I, I want to say, that again brings me to, to uh, me wanting to use this model that you can see here, that, that kind of can represent a less concrete reality or a less concrete, um, a more imaginative approach to, yeah, uh, to this idea of, of, of experiencing, navigating a city and yeah, landscape, uh, if you want. Um, two more minutes, that's gonna be okay. Uh, yeah, this, 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 th there is this um, notion of, um, 
I think very well known uh, and popular, maybe even poppy uh, 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 term, junk spa space uh, by um, Rem Kohlhaas, um, that I wanted to, to put here um, because it's, it's also this idea of junk space, if you want, we could, we could if we look back to this kind of image, um, we could also call it ruin. We could also think of a, of a ruin as something in decline, and that, again, has a lot of potential, clearly. And I think the word junk space in relation to Brussels, not only recently uh, with the uh, with what's sorry, what Kohlhaas is saying here about the use of junk space. Um, I think junk space has has maybe a yeah the the relation between Brussels and junk space is not so uh, arbitrary. I would say um, time. Sorry, um, and that brings me to to the the idea of the ruin, which is something that uh, time by true time got demolished, but that is very much connected to the idea of the romantic, which then again is reflected in uh, Wordsworth's text, which is something very present. Uh, there is a famous scene in which, um, well, famous Wordsworth is not at all a very sexy poet or very well known, but there's a scene where he arrives at the Bastille uh, just after it was demolished and he, like, he picks up a stone and he starts to just by a piece of brick starts to reflect upon the fact that this Bastille is not only a concrete building but also a certain ideology is being demolished and he starts to reflect upon the fact that actually this is this is a beginning the fact that he picks up the, the debris of the of the building says like this is something to start from so um, so this connection with junk space and the ruin I thought was somehow uh, relevant uh, because as you can see there's also a lot of new, okay, sorry. Um, I just gonna, yeah, this, this is all just several shots. I'm just uh, jumping to the script uh, which I'm writing, as I said, I'm t together with an urbanist. This is his name is Joachim de Klerk. He runs Architecture Workroom Brussels, which is an experimental think tank for architecture and urbanism in Brussels. Um, he was behind um, a quite influential book, Brussels and Manifesto, Towards, and this word of towards was very important and is very important in our work together now. Towards the capital of Europe. Maybe in the case of the film, we can add a question mark there. Um, so that's just to say that this is the person I'm working with. And there were, there's also a soundtrack being made for the film, which is done by um, Nabia Iqbal, uh, AKA Throwing Shade, a London-based um, producer and a radio DJ. And she is also uh, helping me a lot with reading the Wordsworth uh, verses, which is the end. Thanks so much.